you can see rice fields almost all over Bali. Its sheer lush beauty is mesmerizing. Rice is the staple food in Bali and has a strong ties to Balinese culture and tradition. They view rice as a gift from God and a symbol of life. Aside from rice, Balinese also grow soybeans, tea, coffee, cacao, peanuts, chili peppers, onions, corn, and many more. On the side of the road, you can buy some local fruits like watermelon and also crops like corn where you can choose between yellow and white one. In this trip, we visited Sarga Chocolate Factory. On our way, we were welcomed by a tropical beauty, a small village vibes. This is where they process the rice. They lay down and dry under the sun. And after this, they will store it and the next step will be milled. The road is a bit bumpy, but that's okay because you will enjoy nature view along the way. In a small river, we saw some locals swimming and washing their clothes. And here we are in Sarga Chocolate Shop. Unfortunately, the shop is closed but luckily we met this guy and he agreed to show us around yeah that's amazing mr regal star showed us generous hospitality we asked him if we can make a short interview and he was very welcoming we learned a lot from him about how they passionately make their premium chocolate we also get to try 12 different varieties of their chocolate. The small tour is very informative and interesting. Hi, I'm Regal Star, the co-founder and CEO of Sorga Bali Chocolate. Here we are in East Bali, Karangas and Joshri. We'll be taking you guys around our factory and we'll check out how the chocolate is done. From the cacao tree till the end, product a chocolate bar which is which looks like this one of them and we have 12 flavors so we have our own organic cacao farm you know we don't use any pesticides in any of the stuff to keep our cacao pods healthy it was one of the first chocolate companies in bali it started in 2011 so after when the harvest season is here all our team and the farmers they get together and they cut all the cacao pods and basically they check for the finest quality of cacao pod, uh, cacao fruit. The reason we have to do that is to avoid any of the moldy flavors, to avoid any of the insects. Usually you get in a commercial chocolates, you get a lot of insects and mold. We choose all the finest cacao pods. Now there's three types of fermentation. Basically there's single stack fermentation, a double stack fermentation and a triple stack fermentation. When you do a triple layer fermentation, it, when it goes from one box to another box, it usually mixes up and then the, uh, it evens out the fermentation process. But by the end of the third level box fermentation, you get a kind of a fruity flavor. So cacao is also like wine. Uh, wine, the longer you keep, it's better. But cacao, if you do it from anywhere between three to four years, it really gives a really mature flavor and you get a very fine quality cacao. So we mildly roast it at about 55 degrees Celsius, which is like perfectly cooked and it doesn't give a very strong flavor, it just gives the right flavor to the cacao.
They make fine artisan chocolate crafted with loving care from bean to bar. They choose premium cacao pads from Balinese farmers and it is fermented with precision, sun-dried roasted and is stone ground to velvety perfection. Their chocolates are divine. Uh, why am I in a chocolate business? Well, uh, a chocolate business, I mean, why not? Like, it's, it's chocolate, so everyone likes chocolate, but, and, 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 and the other hand, it's what an interesting product you are selling, happiness. It's really exciting and it, it's really, it's really nice to be in it. So that's the reason I chose chocolate and here I am producing sort of chocolate. I mean, uh, it has affected our business for sure, heavily, like heavy, heavy, heavily. Uh, but what are we doing right now is basically we transition our business online, being like marketing on the, uh, you know, chocolate making classes and things that would interest the local people that's out here to get more chocolate experience. Mostly we used to sell only from our store. Now we are going out for retailers. So, you know, a lot of retailers are starting to carry out chocolate. So that's just a transition that we had to do in order to survive um, Corona. We do open it, but then we have a strict uh, guidelines. In order to maintain the quality, we can't sell it everywhere and anywhere. So it needs to be limited and in on exclusive areas and it because it's a niche that we have and it's like, you know, the quality is different. So yes, we do open for wholesale, but yeah, it's all open to discussion. Our next destination is Charlie's Chocolate. The entrance fee costs about 10,000 rupiah. You can enjoy walking under the shady coconut trees leading you to beautiful beachfront view. The ocean is very relaxing and perfect to unwind. You can also enjoy unique architecture which is Instagram worthy pose. They also sell a unique product similar to Nutella but a more healthy version using cashew and chocolate. They also have a swing with different level. A great place to sit down and relax while you sip a chocolate almond drink. We decided to go to Virgin Beach to meet the sunset and to have our dinner. This place is not so crowded and the beach is very beautiful with a pure white sun and a crystal clear water. Once you order food in the restaurant, the sunbed is free of charge. The atmosphere here is different from other beaches like Kuta, Uluwatu, and Changu. People here are very relaxed, just chilling and having a good time away from a stressful day. When we came here, they setting up a fireplace to give a romantic and welcoming vibes. This beach is definitely a worthy place to visit when you come in eastern part of Bali. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon!